Hello and welcome to Let Me Bore You to Sleep. My name is Jason Newland and my stomach is making some weird noises for some reason. Please only listen to this boring recording that is aimed at boring you to sleep when you can safely close your eyes even if you were to fall asleep with your eyes open please still only listen when you can safely close your eyes don't oper- don't operate uh, I always say don't operate heavy machinery You know, when you like medication, it might cause drowsiness. So don't operate heavy machinery. I mean, I've worked in factories, and usually you don't have to carry the machinery. It's heavy. It's bolted to the floor. You can't carry it. You're going to carry a like a tractor. You're going to carry a tractor around. Like, and you'd be listening and fall asleep and then the tractor falls on you I mean God, imagine a crane driver listening to this oh everyone's standing watching the, the big beam of metal being lowered <laughs> down and thinking oh it's that's, that's very skillful that is not realising that it's just blowing in the wind the person up there is fast asleep, being bored to sleep by a podcast of boredom. So yeah, ideally, just be careful really, I suppose. It's good advice for all aspects of life in a, in a way, isn't it? In a, in a kind of a way... Uh, it's not much on telly today. Just thought I'd let you know. Not much on telly. The weather's definitely changed. I can't believe... Well, I do believe it, but... It's gone from being really really hot to being mild I wouldn't even say it's t-shirt weather unless of course you're wearing a t-shirt and you're outside and you're feeling comfortable then I suppose it is t-shirt weather for you and I see people walking around in the winter in t-shirts. What's that about? But then... Car drivers. I see that. Like people... Because I don't drive a car. I don't drive a motorbike. I don't drive a scooter. I don't drive a train or you know I don't I don't drive anything but I've noticed that when I go to well, any garage really although I don't travel around the garages of the country it's not it's not my hobby but I've noticed whenever wherever I go and I go to a garage in the winter pretty much there's always someone that just gets out of their car and they're wearing a t-shirt or you know just a like a, a jumper or you know and there's me in 15 jackets and you know I was like can hardly move because I've had to cover myself so much because of the coldness and they just stroll in all relaxed all a bit nippy out there no it's cold 
that you know you've only travelled from your car to the door, and then you travel back from the garage door to your car, and then you get out of your car on the driveway, and you walk into your front door. It's not. It's not a great deal of time outside. Try standing out in it for an hour, walking to the shops. Drivers, you don't even know who you're born. <laughs> People say that you don't know you're born. I can read you like a book. I know you better than you know yourself. No, you don't. And no, you can't read me like a book. First of all, I don't have pages. I don't mean like being held, I don't really like being touched, full stop. I definitely don't want to be held like a book. That'd be weird. You can't read me like a book. You can't read anybody like a book. No one knows what another person's thinking. We like to pretend we do, or like we like to think we do, but we don't. How can you? If we knew what each other were thinking all the time, none of us would have any friends. <laughs> none of us would have anyone that cared about us or liked us because they'd know what we were thinking deep inside. And it's not always pleasant. But it's just thoughts. There's a big difference between thinking it and believing it and acting on it. Huge difference. And that's where Facebook comes in. Because people, some people, they post what they're thinking in the moment when actually that's not there. You know, you can't base your belief system on a little rant that you have on a Saturday evening after a few drinks or after an argument with a spouse. And isn't spouse a lovely word? Spouse. It's the most unromantic word in the world, isn't it? Spouse. I think they should use that in the, the wedding ceremony. Do you take this man to be your spouse? And do you take this woman or this man to be your spouse or this zebra or whatever? Do you take this giraffe? Andre's just woken up I think he's sometimes he's uh, you know it's weird he'll actually he gets about I'd say well literally no notice when he needs to go to the toilet he just gets up and runs to the paper and goes and sometimes He's actually doing a really, one of his most disgusting things he's doing, he's doing it right now. Just to the wee, just the big wee. I looked over and he was only licking it up, licking up his own wee. Now, he's got a big bowl of fresh water a couple of feet, feet away. which he does drink out of and he dips his dips his chin into it and cools down in it and everything but he doesn't get into he doesn't like water so he won't get into the water but he drinks out of it so why would he choose to drink his own wee I suppose it's like natural recycling but I've got to just put trust in his natural ability to 
do what he needs to do so I guess he's he needs to do it or he feels like it has to be done and apparently urine is good for it's good for us you know apparently so that argument doesn't always hold up in court but apparently you know it's it, it's got healing properties but I've never I've never <laughs> I've never indulged myself personally I mean Andre has offered but it's like no you're alright mate just why don't you just drink water like I do just drink it out of you know it's nice water and when you do drink tap water as long as you you know try and take it out of your mind that you <laughs> where it's come from you'll be fine just have a drink So, yeah, that's what he's just done, which is strange, and it's distracted me from what I was saying. So, what I think I'll do is I'll tell you a story. Tell you a story about... Okay, there is this elephant... And it was just, it was just an average elephant, you know. And but he had dreams because basically he he lived in a circus. He grew up in a circus. His parents lived in the circus and his parents' parents lived in the circus and you know they did tricks and stuff like that and but he had a dream he had a dream when he because he was he was still a he was a teenager at this point so he was big obviously elephants are big but he was still little really like young but his dream that he had since he'd been probably about nine years old possibly younger his dream was to run away from the circus and to be an elephant somewhere else to to do something different maybe you know become an accountant or something he liked the idea of running away from the circus to become an accountant because he always enjoyed numbers he enjoyed counting he loved counting to ten that's one of his favourite things it was a trick that he did and uh, sometimes a whole family would get together and they'd say to him Billy do your trick for everybody and he'd say okay here we go I'm a bit shy so go on Billy come on Billy do it and his grandparents would uh, say get on with it we have stuff on telly we want to watch I was like, okay that's supportive thanks cheers and he said alright then I'll do it then one two three four five Six. And Billy looked around just to to gauge the uh, 
a level of anticipation from his audience. Seven. Eight. Nine. Ten. just did a little bow and he looked up waited for his applause but none came and he was confused Billy was confused he thought maybe he'd have to change his name to confused Billy but then he thought uh, that's a bit of a silly idea. So he just ignored it. And he looked around again. He looked up because at this point his head was kind of down. Because he did the bow, but he didn't know what to do next. So his, he his head was practically on the floor, which is a a bit of an unusual position to be and his mum said Billy and Billy said yes mama she said why is your head on the floor Billy said well after counting from one to ten you know it was, uh, which was I'm sure you'll all agree was a pretty amazing you know, to witness that must have been quite enlightening for you all. Uh, and I, I took my little bow, but I didn't realise, because I'd never done it before, I didn't realise how heavy my head was. And his mum said, well, that's the trunk. You see, the, the trunk's quite heavy. That's why we generally have our heads up, because the head is quite a heavy thing. And he said, yeah, but I thought because the body is so heavy, it, you know, the head wouldn't really be an issue. And his mum said, well, it's not when you're standing up. But when you bow down like that, because in order to bow down, you're getting quite close to the ground. And once you do that, it's a little bit harder to actually get back up again. And Billy said, oh, thank you, Deirdre. She said, what? What did you call me? She said, Deirdre. That's your name, isn't it? She said, yes, but you're, sp why are you supposed to call me Mama. Or Mum, or Mummy. Or Mama, or Ma. Or Mum. <laughs> mum? What do you mean, Mum? I don't know, I just was trying to think up different versions of mum. But yeah, why are you calling me Deirdre? Well, I thought it would make a change. I thought it would make a change to call you by your name. Because you call me by my name. Yeah. Well, if you want me to call you mum or mama... I want you to call me son or child actually no I don't like that son I don't want to be called a child because I'm a teenager now I have teenage parts I'm growing into a big strong man and one day I'm going to make babies of my own. Do you actually know what that means? 
No. What did you say it then? Well, I just, I don't know, I was trying to be, just trying to show off, really. You know, I don't, other than that, I don't really have an answer for you at this time. And his mum said, Billy, listen. I hope your name's Billy, because I've forgotten what name I gave you at the beginning of the story, but we'll continue with Billy. He said, yeah, I think it is Billy. Yeah, Billy, that sounds right. Perhaps I should write stuff down on a piece of paper before I start stories like this. And Billy's mum said, who are you talking to? Are you talking about writing things down before you tell a story? Billy said, no, no, that was the, the narrator. What's a narrator? I don't know, it's it's kind of like the easiest job to have in a play, just to be the narrator, just to sort of, uh, it's like a, you know, if you've got people traveling and they're going from, is it, you know, on a stage, you've got a scene and the person, they travel along, two people together and one says, it's cold, isn't it? And the other one says, oh, I'm glad you know that because normally my willy's a lot bigger than this. And then it cuts to the next scene and the person, the narrator would say, and now we move out of the shopping centre. And now the both of uh, Horace and Boris are now fully clothed as they lose... They leave the shopping supermarket and make their way towards the swimming pool where they swim fully clothed for some reason. Oh. That's weird. Not really. So who's talking now then? I am. No, but who? How How are they supposed to know who's talking? We've both got the same voice. Um, it's me, it's Billy. This is me talking. Oh, okay. Well, what, Mum, why don't you have a, like a, a different voice to me then? Just then the people listening would know whose voice is who so they can follow the, this really interesting story uh, and then it'll make it a bit easier but what, in what way what, what, why, how, why you know what, what do you want me to do well you could just change I don't know the the, the timber of your voice the 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 pitch or something like that. Do you mean talk like this? Yeah, um, yeah, I, I kind of, yeah, but y you're an elephant. I know I am. I'm an elephant and I'm your mother. Yeah, but mum, we're elephants, we're the cleverest animals that walk the earth. Yes, why, why do you say that then? Well, I'm, I'm, I'm not judging, I'm not. I'm not, you know, just bear with me. I'm not judging, but I imagine because you're and you're, you, you've got a bigger brain than I've got. You know, I'm a teenager. You've been around for, a, you know, sixty, seventy years or whatever, by the looks of your face. And excuse me, I'm just joking. I'm saying you, you're crinkled. 
Well, so are you. Yeah, and your voice is different now to what it was a minute ago. Well, I've forgotten what it was like before. Okay, so that's why it's gone back. It's not so much the sound, but the the spaces between the words and the speed and the, you know. Because, you know, at the moment you're talking like this. You're talking like this. And therefore... Uh, uh, uh. What what are you talking about? I so see you, you don't... Uh, I don't know how to put it, but perhaps you could talk a little bit different. But this is the way that I talk. Well, it is now because that's how you've chosen to talk. But earlier you were just talking exactly the same as me. Yes, but you said that I should try and talk in a different way. Yeah, yeah, that's right, Mum. Mama. Mummy. Deirdre. Oi, I said don't call me that. Okay, sorry. So, I don't know how to put this in a nice way. Some things can't be put in a nice way, can they? And it's like when people say, no offence, but, and you know what's coming out of their mind is going to be offensive. I'm not racist, but... I'm not homophobic, but, you know, there's always the next thing that comes out of their mouth is racist or homophobic or whatever. And it's ironic and it's funny. It's really funny to hear because it's like they're not even aware of it. It's like, that's what you sound like. What do you mean? You sound like someone that would say, um, I'm not being racist, but, and then go on to say that something um, kind of awful. But... I am racist. <laughs> <laughs> no, you're not. Well, 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 I'm quite a racy person. I get quite, uh, you know, when I'm with someone, I'm uh, quite racy, quite uh, upbeat and full of energy. No, that's not what racist means. It doesn't mean that you're racy as in do you mean horny well yes in fact I do mean horny but I didn't really want to say it to you because you're my son yeah, and I kind of wish you hadn't. Um, yeah, but that's not... No, race is a different thing. Um, what you're referring to is kind of loving. The opposite to the word that we were using. Oh, I see. So is there any chance you can just talk normally? Yeah, I suppose. I can talk normally. Yeah, but not in my voice. What do you mean, your voice? This is my voice. No, it's my voice. I'm Billy, the elephant. A teenage elephant. You're Deirdre. Mummy, Mama. 
Mama. Mum. Mom. You know, that's who you are. I'm. Me. You're. You. Yeah. And I'm me and you're you. And you're you and I'm me. So. Well, so is you need to have your own identity. You've been watching The Jungle Book too much, haven't you? What do you mean by that, Billy? Well, you know, The Jungle Book. Ooh, ooh, ooh. I want to be like you, ooh, ooh. Oh, that's funny. Was that a fake laugh you just did then? No. <laughs> that was, wasn't it? That's a fake. That wasn't a real laugh. What are you doing fake laughs for? Well, if you gave me reason to do real laughs, perhaps I wouldn't need to do fake laughs. Wow. Mum, that was harsh. Yeah, well. You know, you can't complain about what, what something tastes like if you keep eating it. You keep sticking it in your, in your mouth and you don't like the taste, stop sticking it in your mouth. What has that got to do with anything? That doesn't even make sense. Well, it, it, it does make sense, you know, in a sense of, oh, this fish tastes horrible, and then you keep putting it in your mouth, keep putting more fish in your mouth. Yeah, of course, that would be a ridiculous thing to do. But did, did you just say ridiculous? Yes, Mum, I said, ridic I said ri no, I said ridi ridiculous. Yeah, you said ridiculous. What's wrong with that? Well, the word is ridiculous with an R. Not with a W. It's not ridiculous. We di well, we ridiculous. Why? Why did you say it that way? Well, I didn't. I said it was ridiculous. Again, you did it again. I didn't bring you up to speak like that. What are you talking about, Mum? You didn't bring me up. I mean, brought up by the, by the people that trained me to do acrobatics and stuff like that, to jump through hoops. The circus people brought me up. I hardly see you, do I? When you're working, I'm not. When I am, you're not. We don't even sleep in the same tent. Why do you have to be like this? Mum, I'm not being like anything. I'm just being honest. Yeah, but your honesty... It's... It's, it's not necessary. What's the benefit to you for do for saying these things? I don't know if there is a benefit. Well, there you go then. What do you mean there I go? What's that mean there? There I go then. I don't know. It's just something that people say. I don't know what it means, but I've heard people say in arguments, and therefore I've copied what others do and say because I want to fit in with my environment and it means I don't have to think for myself wow that was a bit of uh, self exploration going on there mum now listen listen Billy listen just listen you listen you listen proper I've just about had enough of your insolence for one day alright mum I'll come back tomorrow no, that's not what I mean. I don't want you to... I don't, don't. Always with the clever comment, comment, comments. Did you say comments? Always with the clever comments. Yes, Billy, that's what I said. I said comments. No, you didn't. You said comments. Comments is a different... Comments and comments. That's different. 
please leave a comment. That's, yeah, everyone's going to understand that, apart from people who don't. And if you put, please leave a comment, that's going to be this too much emphasis on the ent. So what are you saying? I've got, I've got to put more conf competence on the cont. The com, rather. Yeah. Did you say continence? Competence. Continence. They're very similar words, aren't they? Continence and competence. Yeah, have very different meanings. Well, it depends if you're talking about continence as in, uh, you know, the different parts of the world. No, I'm not. Oh. But continence means that everything's good. You know, down there and everything. Oh, yeah, I suppose, yeah. Inter intercontinence would be... I suppose moving between countries. No, I don't know. Billy? Yes, Mum. You're, where old are you? About 13 now, aren't you? Oh, I'm 14 actually, but yeah, I'm, I'm 14. Well, happy birthday for that. Billy? Yeah, yes, Mum. You're 14 now, aren't you? Yeah, why are you just repeating the same question? And you got it wrong the first time, and now you, you know my age. You can't just repeat the question and expect me to have forgotten that you asked the question 30 seconds ago. Billy, yes, Mum. See, so you're fourteen now, aren't you? <sighs> yes, yes, Mum, I, I am. Yes. Well, I was speaking to your father last. Well, I was going to say last night, but you're not going to know if it's true or not, are you? I could say last night, it might have been last year. In fact, I can say I was speaking to Dad last night and I might not have done. You're not going to know. Why am I being so specific? I could just say I was speaking to your Dad. But even then, you won't know if it's true. Well, why would you lie to me, Mama? Because it's the elephant way. You must lie. As often as possible. <laughs> that's just, that's not true. Elephants are known for being uh, upstanding citizens and honest and competent and to have high morals. Where on earth did you hear all that rubbish? What do you mean, Mum? It's not rubbish. It's it's fact. Elephants are superior. We're the the most superior um, animals in the world, other than I suppose whales. It's all to do with size, you see. The bigger your heart are, the bigger your the brain is. Well, I don't think that's always true, is it, Billy? Why do you keep saying my name? Well, that way people listening will know who's who. Oh, that's a good idea, actually. Okay, then, Deirdre. Oi, stop it. Don't you dare say that to me again. Or me and you are going to fall out. Okay, Mum, sorry. Why? Right. Let's get on with it. Why? Right. Yes, Mum, yes. Whatever you wish, my love, we can get on with it. 
Yes, 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 yes. So... You want to be an accountant, do you? Yes, I do. What is it about being an accountant that you that appeals to you? Well, I'm a numbers person. Okay, can you uh, elaborate? I'm not sure what that means. Okay, can you say more about, you know, what it is you want to tell me? I suppose I could. I'm not sure if I will. Okay. But it would make it a bit more interesting if you if you were able to what was that son that's I was just uh, that's what you sound like to me when you talk well that was very rude I've never been so insulted in all my life yep another sentence that people say that doesn't mean anything if you haven't been insulted like this before then you really need to get out of the house more often. That sounds like something that's been said before as well, my son. Doesn't sound like a very unique thing to say. I'm not saying it is a unique thing to say, but it's more unique than what you just said. How do you know? Do you even remember what it is I said? Uh, well I'm not sure really it must have been mildly interesting or memorable but I don't necessarily recall every single thing that you ever said which is kind of okay isn't it don't you think well, actually, I don't think. No. I really think. I don't like to think. Thinking is not something that I enjoy. I like to just do. I like to just be. I like to enjoy just doing. I like to enjoy just being. I like to wander around aimlessly, just knowing that I'm big and strong and able to deal with every single possible situation that may arise in the world alright ok I've forgotten who was talking then was it was it Billy or was it Deirdre Billy's bum so I suggest you both get together give yourself a big hug and then uh, you can kind of move on because it just seems like the right thing to do in some ways depending on which uh, which path you take as you move closer towards your goal of whatever it may be oh that's that's nice yeah 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 very nice very 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 nice Indeed. Mm. I'm just so tired. Yeah, I know what you mean. 
I'm tired too. come to the closing credits of that incredible story written and performed by Juicy JJ just for you and you may be thinking wow that was really interesting remember that story about the elephant that wanted to run away from the circus to become an accountant And your friend might say, oh, I, I remember that. I wonder what happened to them. They were so in love. So in love. Potatoes and curry and lots of other food. I mean, thinking, I might go and get a, a breakfast at like, a place that's about three miles away walk up there and have a breakfast and then come home it's something that I might do but I'm not sure if it's something that I want to do it's one of those things that requires making a decision which is not always my favourite thing to do making decisions about anything at all sometimes it's nice to let yourself relax fully calm and loose calm and loose loose and calm Relaxed. in the boredom the deep boredom of my voice surround your body and
so 